Superman 1948. In 1948, we witnessed the first ever Superman movie. Until this day, there's not even a single person who won't go watch the new release for it. But did you know that Kirk Allen was credited only as Clark Kent? Because the studio felt that no one should know who was playing the part of Superman. In fact, they spread the story that Superman was portraying himself in the serial. And to top it all, the 1948 Superman is considered to be the most successful of the series. That's right. Additionally, this serial marks the very first live-action portrayal of Superman ever. Adam Man vs. Superman, 1950 Did you know that this was reportedly the highest-grossing American movie serial of all time? But wait till you hear this. The face of Lyle Talbot, who portrayed Lex Luthor in this serial, was used in the comic books as the actual face of Luthor until the 1960s, when a much thinner version of Luthor was premiered. Ironically enough, the $2 that the messenger was paid to deliver the mystery package to Lewis would be worth nearly $24 in 2022. Well, Adam Man vs. Superman 1950 was surely in itself a masterpiece. Superman and the Mole Men, 1951 well, about this one, we are sure you had no clue that over a year after this film's release, it was split up and used to make a two-parter to close the first season of Adventures of Superman, 1952, Adventures of Superman The Unknown People, Part 1, 1953, and Adventures of Superman The Unknown People, Part 2, 1953. However, the television version discarded the musical score by Darrell Calker and replaced it with music from earlier episodes of the TV series. All references to the alien creatures as Mole Men were edited out of the TV version, and a chase scene was trimmed. At only 58 minutes, this is the shortest Superman film. Superman 1978 Superman 1978 was a mix of emotions for both the viewers and its producers. But why? Well, for starters, Clark Kent and Superman's hair part on opposite sides. Additionally, Richard Donner was disgusted that production designer John Barry and cinematographer Geoffrey Unsworth received no recognition from the Academy for their work on this film. He was particularly aggrieved that one of the nominees for Best Art Direction was California Suite, 1978, which merely duplicated an existing hotel, while Barry created an entire fictional city and a fortress in the Arctic. The movie didn't do much business either. Superman 2, 1980. To make things better, this movie really did hit off as the best film in the franchise. To make everything all the better, on August 1st, 1981, a television spot for the film was the first commercial ever aired on MTV. However, Gene Hackman did not return to do reshoots for the second film. All of his scenes were originally filmed by Richard Donner. Other scenes shot by the new director that required Hackman used a look-alike and a voice impersonator to add any lines needed. This still doesn't change the fact that this movie prompted houseful behavior. Superman 3, 1983 after Margot Kidder expressed her disgust about the firing of Richard Donner to producers Alexander Salkind and Ilya Salkind, her role was cut to 12 lines in less than 5 minutes of screen time. In the film's 2006 DVD commentary, Ilya Salkind says there was little need for Lewis Lane in this movie because her relationship with Superman ended at the end of Superman 2, 1980. Unbelievable, right? This movie had a lot of ups and downs. For instance, Christopher Reeve threatened not to return for this film, to protest Richard Donner's firing, and because he hated the script. With the film already in pre-production, the producers scrambled to find an actor to play Superman. John Travolta was approached, but declined. Jeff Bridges and Kurt Russell were also considered, but they weren't interested. Richard Lester was mortified with the casting of Donza and pleaded for Reeve to return. Reeve eventually agreed if he was allowed to change the script. Well, Reeve kind of played clever there. Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, 1987 Maybe the producers didn't touch wood enough, but the Superman franchise faced a lot of downs from their 1983 movie onwards. We won't term it as full of bad luck, but Christopher Reeve publicly regretted his involvement in the film. He further stated, quote, 
Superman 4 was a catastrophe from start to finish. That failure was a huge blow to my career. According to Margot Kidder, she and Christopher Reeve did not get along during filming. Kidder states that Reeve's ego was inflated because he co-wrote the story. As a result, the failure of this film at the box office prompted the Canon Group Inc. to cancel a planned production of Spider-Man. Superman Returns, 2006. Though it performed below box office expectations, not only did it outgross Batman Begins 2005, but it was the second highest grossing DC Comics film ever made at the time, after Batman 1989. And do you know that workers constructed seven kilometers, 4.35 miles of road, and planted 15 hect acres, or 37.065 acres of corn to recreate the Ken Farm. This is especially a difficult task in that the farm was created during a seven-year drought in Australia. No wonder this one bagged the kind of success it did. Not to forget, but Brandon Ruth, Kate Bosworth, and Kevin Spacey signed on without having read the script. Man of Steel, 2013. The film was released in June 2013, the 75th anniversary of Superman. Henry Cavill adorned not only the guys who loved Superman, but the girls went crazy for Cavill's acting talent and those cheeky features. And why wouldn't they? It was Cavill's dedication that made the people love him and his appearance so much. That's right, Henry Cavill refused to take steroids to muscle up for the role. He also refused any digital touch-ups or enhancements to his body in his shirtless scenes. He said it would have been dishonest of him to use trickery while playing Superman, and he wanted to push his body to the limit to develop his physique into one that was worthy of the character. Henry said he did this because he wanted to make his abs as pronounced and his muscles as defined as humanly possible to create the best possible Superman physique. Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, 2016. And of course, the duo everyone always had their hearts prayed for. Ben Affleck joined Henry Cavill on this journey of saving the world together. However, Ben said that he'd taken a risk by opting for the movie because he was warned by Warner Bros. about the possible negative reaction to his casting and was advised to remain off the internet after the casting announcement. He also said to assuage his concerns. The studio showed him negative comments that fans had initially made to previous superhero castings. But that didn't stop Affleck from giving his best to the movie. He gained an additional 20 pounds of muscle and reached 8% body fat for his role as Bruce Wayne, aka Batman. Justice League 2017. Due to the running time backlash of past DC movies, Warner Bros. demanded a film under two hours without credits. While the final running time for Justice League 2017 was only 119 minutes, the director's cut, Zack Snyder's Justice League 2021, stands at a whopping 242 minutes. Isn't that insane? But what's even more mind-gobbling is that Gal Gadot wore at least 14 versions of the Wonder Woman costume in the film. Each costume was made to suit the needs of the specific scene and performance. Is this guy still bothering you? Zack Snyder's Justice League, 2021. 
Surprisingly enough, according to Zack Snyder, this version contains no shots filmed by Joss Whedon from the theatrical version of Justice League. Despite directorial credits, Zack Snyder has never actually seen the theatrical cut of Justice League 2017. Reportedly, his wife Deborah Snyder and his good friend and executive producer Christopher Nolan advised him to never see it, as it would, quote, break his heart. Ah. Confirmed in an interview by Deborah Snyder and Zack Snyder, the Snyder Cut only has about five minutes total of new shot added scenes with actors, but there are over 2,000 new visual effects shots in the four-hour film. 